Hi there, I'm Jim with First Line Equipment, and today I'd like to go over the Escaso Dream Up version 2 espresso cappuccino machine. This machine is also known as a versatile uh, espresso machine by Escaso. And one of the reasons is because you can use ESE pods, ground coffee, or finely ground coffee to make your espresso, which is mostly found on commercial espresso machines. As a quick review, uh, the power switch on the machine is in the center. So you can turn that switch on, you'll see the three lights go on. The switch here on the right hand side is to make the espresso or extract the espresso uh, through the group head and then the switch on the left hand side is to go into steam mode. Uh, it is about a 30 to 45 second wait, uh, maybe even a little less uh, to get into steam mode and uh, to make your cappuccinos and lattes. Inside this machine is an aluminum thermal block. Uh, found in a Dream Up version 2. This is different than the previous versions which had a brass boiler. Uh, the thermal block where water comes into contact with is stainless steel lined. As of this date and notified uh, by Escaso to us last month, their test machine which went into test mode uh, in 2011 actually made 60,000 espressos. They had to stop the test. That's the reliability that they had on this particular espresso machine. Right now the machine is warming up. There is a cup holder on top. We don't necessarily call it a cup warmer because it does take about two hours to heat the uh, cups up, up on the top here. When you first get your machine, uh, it's a good idea. This one's already been pr uh, primed already. But you want to open the steam valve by turning the knob here uh, counterclockwise, placing a cup, and also hitting the coffee switch. That will get water uh, from this reservoir here through the hose, through the pump, through the thermal block and out the wand. Once you have a nice stream of water, the machine is primed. As you can see, the nice feature also is the water reservoir. You can fill it from the side and you can also see the reservoir's uh, water level on the side uh, as well, which is a really nice feature that you don't find on a lot of espresso cappuccino machines. Versatile, as I said, you can use the ESE espresso pods this is not your regular large coffee pods that are found on other machines. The basket is very thin and that fits in here uh, in the portafilter. Okay? And inside here there is an adapter for the ESC pods. If you don't want to use ESC pods, which is actually good for those who have a family member or office worker who needs to drink decaf, as you can see it's very simple to change. You can move over to the pressurized baskets. And the pressurized baskets have a really nifty feature. And what that is, is if you have a grinder that that's not grinding consistently and fine enough for espresso, the pressurized baskets, which look here on the bottom, will make a decent espresso with that type of ground coffee. The other type of basket is what's found on traditional machines with multiple holes on the bottom. This requires finely ground coffee. And I'm going to explain why we include all three. Uh, one, like I said, with the ESC pods, uh, you may have someone who wants to drink decaf, and you don't want you don't want to have another grinder for uh, the decaf. With the ESC, you create the pressurization, and that builds up the pressure and makes the a, a decent shot of espresso. At the time of this video, there are three baskets included. This may change. There is a very small one, a medium one and a large one. Many customers will ask why three? This small one is actually a European one cup basket. It's a half cup in the US market. The medium one is a full size cup in the European market or a double cup and it is a single cup for the US market. This double for the US market is this very large one. We recommend using this one most often, this one less often, and this one will make a nice paperweight for your desk. If using the non-pressurized basket with ground coffee, inside this machine is included the kit to make it more like a professional machine. Inside here there is a screw, a Phillips head screw, and a screen. Once you loosen that, that will come out do this when the machine is cold, not hot, and you will insert the longer screw 
in through the dispersion screen into the water uh, disperser or jet breaker. So we put this in like this, like that, and this would get inserted here. And this makes it better for the two cup traditional basket or non uh, pressurized basket uh, because it actually levels the indentation that's in the group head, it levels it out so when your coffee is in there and it expands upward, it, it maintains that uh, consistency. You won't have co ground coffee coming back up into that indentation that's really used for pods. For the pressurized basket, you may have some coffee come up, but it really doesn't matter because the pressurization system uh, will, comp will compensate for, for that and make a decent espresso. It, this machine is also versatile in the sense that it actually there's two steam tips included. Uh, one is the uh, frothing aid type uh, tip, which has a little hole in the center here. It doesn't matter which way you insert it because the hole is in the center uh, and equidistant from the ends. And basically, this helps those who have difficulty frothing milk. Not the best for uh, steaming milk for lattes. And that's where the other tip comes in, which is a single hole tip. However, to install the single hole tip, you'll need a little wrench, crescent wrench like this, which is not included with the machine. And there is a little tip that is inserted here that is screwed into the end of the wand. And this comes off. And then this single hole tip actually gets inserted and then also screws in. The reason why this one needs to be screwed in is if it's not, it will actually blow off uh, the steam wand. It will just come right off, so it does need to be screwed in. Okay, we're going to take this off. And the machine is warming up. As you notice, the light went off, so the machine is ready. Uh, you may not see it from there, but the gauge typically is in the up position uh, for coffee mode. Put this on the side here. Uh, just a quick note. Also included with the machine while I put this back is the scoop, which is right here. That's the scoop to coffee. And they may recommend in the instruction manual to scoop one or two cups. No matter which basket you use, we ask that you fill it to the rim and level it off without pushing down on the coffee grinds. Level it off and then tamp which leads us to the next item included, which is this nice aluminum, solid aluminum tamper. Also included is the coffee washer, and that's for cleaning and descaling your machine. Uh, you probably want to order some extra uh, when you place your machine order. On this side is not the items that are included, but here is your ESE pod that fits into this basket. And as you can see, there's an indentation from the pod and that indentation fits right up in here. We're actually going to preheat the porta filter. One thing to remember when you're using the machine, this porta filter, the metal portion, needs to be so hot that you can't touch it. So we'll insert that because we've been heating up without it. We're also going to preheat the cups. Get some water through there. On our tip, best way to preheat your cups is from the hot water of the machine. It is normal for a little dripping here to occur. There is a three way solenoid valve. That three-way solenoid valve, which relieves the pressure of the group head, actually reverts back to the reservoir. Previous models used to have a pipe that was right here. The new Dream Up version 2 does not have that pipe. We can insert our pod. There's a little flap. Insert the pod right here in the basket. This fits nice and easy in here. And we'll make our first shot of espresso. And 
even with a pod, we're getting ice mouse tails. As you see, the machine is fairly quiet when it's under pressure. And we'll turn it off right now. Now, the convenience factor uh, is that you can make a decaf. The downside with espresso pods is that you don't get as much crema as freshly ground coffee. So you're sacrificing uh, a little bit in the quality of the cup, however you're gaining on the convenience side. So there are always trade-offs. And again, trade-offs going from pod to pressurized to non-pressurized. The most superior flavor profile will come from this basket. However, you do need a good burr grinder uh, to grind not only fine enough, but the grind needs to be consistent. So a lot of cheaper grinders will grind fine enough but there'll be a variation in the grind, and that's not good for this basket or for the quality in the cup. Okay, we'll put this on the side here. Inside the box, you will find the instructions on how to uh, change it from versatile uh, pod and pressurized mode to ground coffee mode. There is an instruction manual uh, written in several languages. It will also mention parts that may not be included with this machine. This is a worldwide manual. There may be parts that we have in this machine in the United States that are not, out, not found in machines sold outside the United States and vice versa. So please keep that in mind when looking at the instruction manual. Here is Escaso's thank you letter and also a, a quick start guide. Uh, on the operation of the espresso machine. And last but not least, we're going to go into steam mode, which will press this button here, or switch down. You'll hear the pump have a, a, a pulsating sound going pump, pump. This is normal. What you like to do is you like to put uh, the wand there or into a cup and just drain a little water out. This makes a little clearance in the thermal block to turn into steam mode. Uh, we'll turn that off so it builds up some steam pressure. We have our milk pitcher here. It's about 40% full. You want it about 30 to 50% full. And you also see in the gauge the temperature is climbing. Okay, we're going to bleed it one more time. be ready in about 10 seconds. And one more time here. And then we're ready to go. 45 degree angle on the pitcher. That little hole that I mentioned on the steam uh, tip needs to be right at the surface of the milk. And as the milk rises, you want to lower the pitcher. And if you notice, I keep my other hand below the pitcher uh, to feel for the temperature. Once it's too hot to the touch, I am going to stop. Okay, I'll turn off the steam switch. If you notice, the coffee switch doesn't work, it's disengaged while it's in steam mode. So I'll turn that off. You'll hear the swishing sound, the excess steam pressure will go back to the boiler. And if you look closely here, there's a nice micro froth with very, very small bubbles. For cappuccino, uh, making this makes it very easy, this tip makes it very easy for those with uh, little experience. Again, the other tip, better for lattes because you're just steaming the milk, you're not building a froth. And for those who care to learn uh, to use this tip to make a froth, you can also make a very nice froth and you will actually get a little more volume using the single hole tip. This is normal dripping that will occur. We'll remove the pod. 
And the one thing that you want to do after you steam, if you're going back to make espresso, the temperature is too hot to make espresso right now. So we'll take the uh, uh, take a cup and put it on, place it under the wand. Open the uh, steam valve by turning the knob counterclockwise, and we'll hit the coffee switch. We want to watch the gauge to get it towards the middle, uh, vertically. And we also want to watch the stream of water coming out. Now we're getting a nice steady stream and flushing the steam out. And we'll hit off the coffee switch and close the steam valve by turning the knob clockwise. It's about eight, nine ounces of water that'll need to be flushed to bring the temperature down. You can also, if you're done making cappuccini, making one or two, uh, you, you don't really need to do that. Just let the machine cool down and next start up, run water through it. The last point on uh, the machine is actually the cleaning and the finish. Uh, the machine should be descaled once minimum every three months. It could be more often, but should not be less often. Uh, and just run that through the steam one like I just did with the water and through the group head and use the Escasso cleaner washer. Uh, the unit does not need to be back flush. There is no back flush disc on this. And as far as cleaning the surface, just a, a, a damp terry cloth, no abrasives, no cleaners, just a clean white. Uh, just back to the scaling. Just make sure you don't get any in the polished aluminum because it will ruin the, uh, uh, the clear coat finish that's on the uh, aluminum. Other than that, that's it. Thank you for watching and have a great day.